three, uh, the basic combinations and uh, the resulted relations. So pretty much let's talk about um, those elements, connections, and the equations to express their relations. Uh, there are some uh, basic terms need to be clarified at the beginning. Uh, the first one is the node. The node is a join point of two or more elements. So from this given example circuit, we can count how many nodes. So we have one here, two here, three here, four here, and five here. So they're labeled in the circuit as well, very nice, which won't happen in future, as you know. And so from these nodes, you can tell actually you have multiple elements joined together, right? For example, these. And to two, you have these, right? This is a node. Second is loop. Loop is a close pass where no node is counted more than once. Uh, this is a little bit uh, tricky to count from here. Uh, we leave it to the last. Uh, before it, let's talk about another concept, mesh. Mesh means one loop doesn't contain other loops, so this is easier to count. So how many meshes we can tell? Yeah, this is one mesh, two mesh, three mesh, four mesh. Nothing else, just four meshes. Okay. Each one of them doesn't contain any other loop or mesh. Last one is called branch. Is branch is portion of circuit only containing one element. So actually you can tell between any two of nodes, there's one branch. So from one to two, you have one branch which contains only one current source. Between one to three, you have another different branch which contains only R1 itself. So on and so forth. This is the branch. So if, we, if you count how many branches we have, so basically we have one here, two here, three here, four here, five here, six here, seven here, and eight here. So again, each branch has one and only one element contained. The last one is loops. Uh, loops is actually, as I said, a little bit tricky to count, but with the concept of mesh, we can do the counting like this. We count one mesh loop, two meshes loop, three meshes loop, and four meshes loop, and no more. And if you're interested in, you can count by yourself, and then end up with actually this particular circuit has 13 loops. And another thing I want to emphasize is due to the concept of node, we can find the equivalent circuit of this in different look, like this. So what I did is pretty much squeeze these three points. I'm not calling them nodes because they are considered as one node, one same node. So, so we can do squeezing these three different points, looks like different points at least from the look, but essentially they're the same node. So squeezing them together to become one dot. So this is nothing but node one up here. Do the same thing to the bottom three points Again, not three nodes, because they are same node, okay? So we end up with this single point, which is the node number five. Okay, this is the equivalent circuit, having different look. Okay, so this is an emphasizing a very important concept so you can see these three points and these three points, they have same voltage potential. 
Therefore, they are actually the same node. It's a very useful tip in the later circuit analysis. Now, with those concepts clarified, we can go ahead to talk about the connection. The first connection is series connection. Yeah, we have heard series and the parallel connections quite a bit. And now let's look into it. So to series connection, uh, it is like uh, all of the elements are connected like a chain from one terminal to the other. Uh, the key is the connected elements in series have the same current. For example, we have series resistors here. Okay? The total resistance it just equals to the sum of them all. Be careful. There's no other branch out of them. Okay, Coming out of in the middle? No, nothing like that. Okay. That's why we can call R1, R2, R3 as series connection. Otherwise, we can't consider them as series connected. We will see examples. Well, we can also have series voltage source connected like this. And the total voltage with this predefined polarity is equal to the sum of V1 through V3. Be careful the defined polarity here. Same as the polarity of V1, V2, and V3. In other words, if we have preset total voltage polarity as this, then the total voltage need to have a negative sign in the front. Another trick could be is like this. If V2 is having such flipped polarity, then what is the total voltage here? Obviously, here should be negative, right? So next is the series current source. This is actually a tricky connection because uh, keep this in your mind. Since I1 through I3 are series connected, they should have exactly same current. Therefore, if you connect them together, then they must have the same current, otherwise it makes no sense. In other words, I1 not equals to I2, not equal to I3, going to introducing three different current value along which is impossible. Next is the parallel connection. So parallel connection is like the elements are connected like a net between the same pair of terminals and all the elements share the same voltage so parallel elements having the same voltage across them the parallel resistor is like this so the total resistance equals to the reciprocal of the sum of all resistance reciprocal so three resistors parallel and the total equals to 1 over the sum of the reciprocal of each one of them. So you can imagine if we parallel more like uh, R7 here, then the total resistance is going to be the extending the division. And in the denominator here, you have 1 over R7. and so on and so forth, if you have more parallel. And the next parallel voltage source, uh, this is another tricky connection, because you must have exactly the same voltage among this source voltage. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Okay. Last, the parallel current source. Well, you can do parallel connection among different current sources. That's fine. And, then, and the resulted total current is equal to the sum of all of them. 
again, you still need to be careful with the current current direction. If you define your total current direction like this, and then it equals to I4 plus I5 plus I6, because they have the consistent current direction with the defined total current. Otherwise, if you have this defined total current direction, then you need a negative sign in front of them. And what if I5 has opposite current direction? What do you should do then? You need to have negative sign in front of I5 itself. Right? Generally speaking, uh, students uh, might have trouble in identifying the series and parallel connection. So let's take uh, two circuits as examples. Okay, let's just uh, go ahead to identify the series connection components and the parallel connected component in each one of them. First of all, this circuit, what can we see in series connection? So obviously we can tell R1 and 24 volt source are series connected. So is R4 and 16 volts, and R2, R3, and A volts. So basically, you're seeing these series connected, these series connected, these are series connected. Then what are parallel connected? Is R1 and R4 parallel connected? No. R1, R4 are not parallel connected. Okay, they have one terminal shorted together. The other terminal of R1 and the other terminal of R4, they are not connected together. So R1, R4 cannot be considered as parallel. However, R1, 24 volts, and R4, 16 volts, these two are parallel connected. One terminal connected together here, the other terminal connected together here, right? Or say here, they're the same. And also R2, R3, A volts here is also parallel with these two. So this is the uh, first circuit. Let's take a look at the second circuit here. What are series connected? Can you find any? The answer is no. There's nothing series connected. Let's take a look at uh, an R1 and R2. Are they series connected? It seems like one terminal is connect to the other element, one terminal. However, in the middle of their connection, you have a branch coming out. As I said in previous slide, this cannot be considered as serious connection. The rest of them follow the same thing. They cannot be considered as serious connection. How about parallel? Can you see any parallel? The answer is unfortunately no. Nothing is parallel connected either. So yes, this is a, a little bit complex circuit in where you can't find or say you can't directly simply find serious connected elements nor parallel connected element. Now, how to analyze this circuit? Well, of course, we have different technique to use. We will see in future. Next, let's talk about the open circuit and short circuit, which are two very important concepts and connections in electric circuits as well. So first, open circuit. 
um, as shown in this picture here, uh, open in the middle of a branch. So what can we know about it? Uh, first, we know the current is definitely zero, no matter what. Okay, it doesn't matter what the rest of circuit look like, as long as you have open somewhere, the current through this open is definitely zero ampere. However, how about the voltage cross this open to terminals? The answer is don't know. Okay, in other words, it really depends on the rest of circuit. So without showing them, we cannot know. Similarly, in short circuit, so to this short circuit, what can we know? First of all, the voltage is definitely zero. Cross this short circuit, no matter what. It's not relying on any rest of circuit. Okay. It's guaranteed to be zero voltage. However, the current is something depends on the rest of circuit. So we cannot know by only knowledge of this short circuit. Again, open circuit, the current is zero. However, the voltage is unknown. And two, of course, we conduct some uh, circuit analysis. It can be no, but if only showing open circuit without showing the rest of circuit, we don't know. Okay. Short circuit, similarly, uh, the voltage cross is zero. However, the current is relying on the rest of circuit. We continue here. Let's talk about the voltage and the current dividers uh, in so-called single loop and single node circuits, respectively. Actually, um, the voltage and current dividers, they are one of the circuit analysis techniques, but we bring up here to show you as one of the basic circuit combinations. Let's see how it works. So in a single loop, we can apply a voltage divider. It must be a single loop. What does it mean is the elements along this loop have the same current. Otherwise, it's not a single loop. We can't apply voltage divider directly. And if it is single loop, then the total voltage is shared by two elements. Here, I'm using red and bold to emphasize two. Okay. No more than two, it has to be two. Let's see how we deal with it. Uh, first example here, uh, we have a single loop. And uh, clearly, we only have two resistors, R1 and R2, sharing the total voltage V1. So you can easily imagine or even guess that VR1 plus VR2 equals to V1. Very simple. Then if you're looking for VR1, which is the voltage cross R1, what we should do? It follows such equation. So VR1 equals to the total voltage times a ratio in where the numerator is the R1 itself. Denominator is the sum of R1 and R2. And if looking for VR2 and equals to total voltage times a ratio, and in this ratio, the numerator is R2 because we are looking for the voltage cross R2. Denominator remains as the sum of R1 and R2. So the first example here is very simple. It's really only two elements there sharing the total voltage V1. But obviously in the single loop, we might have two or more than two. For example, the second example here, Total voltage V2 is shared by R3, R4, and R5. How can we deal with the two elements? The idea is like this. So if we are looking for the voltage cross R3 only, then it equals to the total voltage 
times a ratio. In this ratio, numerator is R3 itself. Denominator is R3 plus the sum of all the rest. Okay. So by combining all of the rest of resistance together, we consider the circuit as R3 and all the rest share the total voltage V2, therefore only two elements. Following this idea, the voltage cross R4 is equal to total voltage times the ratio, in where numerator is R4 itself, denominator is R4 plus the sum of all the rest. Same thing in VR5. Total voltage times a ratio. R5 in the numerator, denominator is R5 plus the sum of all the rest. Of, of course, here I'm using a green color to emphasize a trick. So I'm labeling the voltage of R5 in this polarity, which is opposite as the other. By opposite, I mean, if you're thinking of the current flow, it's actually like uh, clockwise, right? So clockwise going into the positive terminal of R3, going to the positive terminal of R4 as well. However, it's entering the negative polarity of VR5. So that's what I mean by different polarity of VR5 comparing with VR4 and the VR3. So how to find this VR5 with this labeled or say predefined polarity? If you're only using the formula or idea before like a total voltage times this ratio, and then this part is VR5 with this polarity which is opposite to the given labeled one. So we need a negative sign in front of it. What if more resistors uh, involved in this single loop? In other words, what if more resistors series connected inside of this loop? Say we have uh, R6 over here. And VR6 labeled here. Then how to find this VR6? VR6 is obviously total voltage times R6 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have R6 plus summation of all of the rest. which is R3 plus R4 plus R5. Okay. So this is so-called voltage divider between two elements and only two elements by keeping one and combining all the rest. Now let's talk about the other hand, which is current divider. You can only apply the current divider in a single node circuit in where all the elements sharing or say have the same voltage parallel connected. Single node means they are always paralleled between single pair of nodes. So how to find the, the current along individual branch? For example, the IR6 and the IR7, respectively. The idea is similar to the voltage divider. So the current flow through R6 is equal to total current times a ratio. In where, be careful, the numerator is not R6, but R7. Denominator 
is the sum of R6 and R7. Okay, so the numerator is a little bit tricky, or say different from the volt divider idea. Same thing here. If looking for the current through R7, it equals to the total current times the ratio. In the numerator is not R7 either, but R6. Denominator remaining same as sum of R6 and R7. Okay, so be careful. The numerator is not the resistance of that particular current you're looking for. It's the other one. Let's see three branches parallel. Okay, how to deal with this two element thing? The idea remains the same. Uh, you have to keep one. Keep the one you're looking for and then combining the rest of them. Let's show you. Uh, for example, if you're looking for the current through R8, it equals to the total current times a ratio. In the numerator is the other, rather than R8 itself, is the other. Who is the other? Because you have two more, R9 and R10, so we have to combine them. How to combine them? R9 and R10 are parallel. So the parallel between R9 and R10 is the so-called the other. And the denominator here is R8 plus this the other. So again, R8 share the current with so-called the other, which is R9 parallel with R10 in this particular circuit. Then let's continue to see R9. The current of it equals to the total current times a ratio. In the numerator is the other. Now, who is the other? You keep R9 itself because you're looking for the current through it. Then combine the rest of all. R8 parallel with R10 is the other. In the denominator is R9 plus the other. Two elements. Same thing for R10. So the current through R10 equals to the total current times the ratio. Numerator is the other. It's a combo between R8 and R9 parallel. Denominator is R10 plus this combo. So keep in mind both voltage and current dividers are applied on two elements. If not two, you need to do combination. Following this idea, you can solve as many as you want. Okay. Say you parallel with one more resistor R11. Then what is the current flow through R11 then? Is equals to total current I2 times a ratio. Numerator is whom? The other. Who are the other? R8, R9, and R10. Parallel. Denominator is R11 plus this parallel. Hope this makes sense. Otherwise, just let me know. And the last basic combination and the relations is about delta and y connection, as well as their uh, conversion uh, in between. So the left one is called delta uh, connection. The right one is y connection. So you can notice that both are about connection among three nodes, A, B, and C. Okay, keep this in your mind. Uh, so by delta and Y, it pretty much means the look. And even though the Y is sometimes looks like uh, upside down. Okay. So let's see uh, if we try to convert the delta connection to Y connection, um, what is the equivalent resistance we should end up with? Okay. Uh, 
and this is the uh, set of formulas you want to follow. So RA after conversion is between a middle point, we call it neutral point, and node A. And this resistance is equals to R1 times R2. So R1, who is R1? R1 is between node A and C. R2 is between node A and B. Denominator is the summation of R1 through R3 in delta. And then the equivalent RB, which is between neutral point and the node B, is equal to our ratio. The numerator is the product between R2, which is between node A and B, and R3, which is between node C and B. RC follow the same idea. So basically, the numerator is always the product between two resistors. Which two resistors? The two resistors connecting to this node you're talking about. Say to node A. The numerator is R1 and R2 who are connecting node A. RB numerator is R2 and R3. R2, R3 are connecting to node B. And so on. From y to delta, uh, which is the other way conversion, um, R1 here is equals to a ratio as well. The denominator is RB, be careful. R1 is between node A and C. However, the denominator here is RB. Numerator is RA times RB plus RB times RC plus RC times RA. And the numerator remains same to all the three resistors here, R1 through R3. Denominator is a little bit tricky. So R1 denominator is the resistor. To R2, the denominator is RC. R2 is between node A and B, so denominator is RC. To R3, R3 is between node B and C, so denominator here is RA. So when you try to apply these formulas, don't try to just memorize the equations. You need to understand the connections, because in the future exam, there's no node A, B, and C at all. Instead, what you're seeing are three nodes without any labeling on it. So how to apply these formula on those? The easy scenario is this. If R1 equals to R2 equals to R3 equals to R, then what is the resulted Y equivalent resistance? RA equals to RB. equals to RC equals to one third of R. Right. The other way around, what if RA equals to RB equals to RC equals to R? Then in the delta equivalent resistance, R1 equals to R2 equals to R3 equals to three times of R. Okay. This is the easiest scenario you could have. 